Who wants to go to a lab and have wires plugged in all over their body and then get stared at all night while they sleep? Yeah, me neither. So an at-home sleep study, it's certainly the more comfortable option. And in many cases, it does exactly what you want at a fraction of the cost. But how do these clever little devices work? Well, I'm gonna show you how. First, a quick comment about the difference between the at-home tests and the lab tests. Lab tests are the gold standard for sleep studies. In addition to the data an at-home test can gather, in-lab tests measure brain waves, which are important for some sleep disorder diagnoses like central sleep apnea. But if you think you have moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea and don't suffer from certain other medical conditions like COPD or congestive heart failure, then the at-home test will most likely be fine and give you a far more convenient and cheaper option for diagnosing what is causing your chronic tiredness. Also, insurance companies will often only pay for an at-home test to begin with, so there's that to think about too. Right, so let's assume you've been in touch with your doctor and they've suggested that you do an at-home sleep study. Well, in that case, you'll have a sleep study kit either sent to you or made available for you to pick up. Then it's over to you to conduct the test yourself. The kit will come with various sensors to attach to your body. These sensors may include finger probes, devices to strap or sensors to stick to your chest, chest bands, and sometimes nose cannulas too. But it'll be far less instrumentation than the lab test will require. For example, our favorite at-home sleep kit, the WatchPat 1, contains a watch to wear around your wrist, a probe for your finger, and a sensor to stick to your upper chest, and that's it. Once you're set up, it's time to go to sleep as normal, and the kit will measure various data from your sleeping. The WatchPad does this by connecting to your smartphone and storing the data in an app, which then is sent to a sleep technician in the morning for analysis and a sleep report to be compiled. Once you have your sleep report, your doctor can use it to diagnose any sleep disorders that you may be suffering from, and you can then consider your therapy options. Simple. So, what does the sleep kit measure? Well, that would depend on what type it is. Type 4 tests measure one to three variables like airflow and blood oxygen levels. Type 3 kits, however, like the WatchPat 1, measure up to seven variables, including respiratory effort, airflow, snoring, oxygen saturation, heart rate, body position and movement, and something called PAT, which is a measure of your volume of your finger artery. Now, you may be wondering how kits like the WatchPat 1 are able to measure things like airflow and respiratory effort without a nasal cannula. Well, in the case of the WatchPat 1, they do this by measuring PAT. Changes in the arterial volume is known to correlate with abnormal breathing events. And so they use this to measure things usually requiring intrusive nasal or chest accessories. I should remind you that in-home studies of all kinds are never quite as accurate as in lab tests because they don't measure brain waves. They must infer sleep or wakefulness from other more easily accessible data. But if anything, that means they underestimate the number of waking events that you have in the night. So if you have reason to think that your sleep apnea is moderate to severe, they should come up with the correct diagnosis and you can then take further action. And you won't even need to have an expensive and inconvenient lab appointment. If you'd like to take an at-home sleep test but don't have a prescription for one, you can always get in touch with us at Resp Shop, and we can have a chat and get one sent out to you along with a video on how to conduct the test properly. See the description for ways to do that, and as always, sleep tight.